Please take your Bibles and turn to the book of Proverbs chapter 6, and we are going to begin in verse 6. And it's, the Bible said, Go to the ant, thou sluggard, and consider her ways and be wise. This morning, I want to speak to you on the subject of the ant and the sluggard. So the Bible very clearly says that, that a, an ant is mentioned here for our learning, but also the sluggard is mentioned. The slu a sluggard means someone that is in indolent or slothful. The word sluggard means a person habitually lazy, idle, inactive, or a drone. But in verse 6, it says, Go to the ant, thou sluggard. And God created man in God's image. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 says, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. It's very humbling for the Bible to, to, to realize that someone is such a, a deplorable state in their character of laziness, that the Lord tells them, I want you to go to an ant for instruction. All of us, and certainly when we were little, we would take a uh, look at ants, and down south, um, there's ants everywhere, and really, I believe that the fire ant, they call it the wingless wasp, is a plague on the south. It's just, it's terrible. They're, the, they are so vicious, but I, I, they, they are very hard workers. Do you, do you know on the, on the face of the earth, they claim there's a million billion ants? Now, that's quite amazing. A million billion ants. But you know, there's a lot of things about that ant that's very unique and remarkable. But the last part of the verse here in verse 6 says, Go to the ant thou sluggard, consider her ways and be wise. So the explanation of her ways is listed in the next verses. But here it says, consider her ways. In considering her ways, the issue of being wise also helps us to realize I have to compare my own behavior with that of what the Lord would want in my life. In the book of Haggai, chapter 1, verse 4, the Bible says, Is it time for ye, O ye, to dwell in your seal houses, and this house lie waste? Now, therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Now, this, this is something we need to consider. Ye have sown much and bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe ye, but there's none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes, thus saith the Lord, consider your ways. God tells us, I, I want you to consider my ways. And the challenge was at that time, Haggai the prophet was preaching to the people and the temple needed to be built. And then later, the walls of Jerusalem are, are rebuilt, but God wanted them to consider your ways. You're doing all this work, yet you're coming to nothing. You might want to evaluate yourself and what you're doing. In verse 6, it says, be wise, be wise. So go to an ant and learn from the ant. And that's where we uh, are challenged to look here. If you think about the call to wisdom, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 20, Wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the street. She crieth in the chief place of the concourse, in the openings of the gates. In the city she uttereth her words, saying, How long, ye simple ones, will you love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. So wisdom is crying everywhere. The wisdom of God is telling you, hey, how long, how long will you go and just say, no, I'm, I'm doing fine. It's really amazing as we look at this, the promise that God gives us of wisdom. God tells the sluggard, go to the ant, consider her ways and be wise. You know, God even is challenging a sluggard, someone that's lazy. I want you to be wise. You know, God, God has all good things prepared for us, but God wants us to be wise people. And God's given us a promise of that wisdom. The Bible said in James 1, 5, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and abradeth not, 
and it shall be given him. Now notice with me in verse 7, the description of the, the actions of the ant, which having three, three things here, which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, she does two things, provideth her meat in the summer and gathereth her fruit in the harvest. The emphasis in this, in this, in verse 8, is provideth and gathereth. But you see in verse 7, you see the lack of de dependence upon external motivation or directives from a ruler for her to take care of her duty. <laughs> now you think about human nature. How often do we have to have external motivation to do what we ought to do because it's the right thing to do? How often do we need external motivation or we rely upon external motivation that we say, well, before I do this, I need some encouragement. We're in a day that is eat up with a desire for affirmation. If somebody's not patting somebody on the back, somebody's crying a big tear. If someone is not constantly commenting or complimenting someone, then they don't want to do anything. That, that's a deviation in our character. And a lot of it has been facilitated simply by social media. Always needing that quick fix of adrenaline and dopamine to say, oh, that made me feel good. Well, there's some things that are your duty that doesn't necessarily feel good. When I watch an ant, when, 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 anytime I've watched ants, I put some food out. So far, they're very fascinating. I just don't want them in my house. And I don't want to bite me down south. I, I think they have a trumpet system down south. What happens is you get into some fire ants, or you people that raised in the north probably have no idea what I'm talking about. They get all over you and you don't even know it. And then all of a sudden one ant goes, and they all bite you at the same time. It's like, huh, right? Yeah. Their duty. Well, our duty. If you consider our duty, behold, the third time I'm ready to come to you and I will not be burdensome to you for I seek not yours but you for the children ought not lay up for the parents but the parents for the children so when we think about her providing meat is it that the Bible said in verse 8 provideth her meat in the summer gathereth her food in the harvest those ants they're busy and you know what? I've seen them, if you take an ant's body compared to me, and, and I'm, I'm not giving you a good comparison. I mean, they have something with their jaws that's like this big, right? Right? And they, if they'll get it up to the ant pile, and if they can't get it in the hole, the other ones will come out, and they'll, they'll all try to pile on to try to get it inside. Why? Because it's necessary food that they have, our duty. Joseph spake to Pharaoh about this preparation, and stressing the importance of finding someone to lay up in store for seven years ahead. And listen, the call is go to the ant, thou sluggard, consider her ways and be what? Wise. Notice what it says in Genesis 41:33. Now, therefore, let Pharaoh look out a man discreet and wise and set him over the land of Egypt. Would to God we had that in America. Someone wise that God would appoint to be over the land. Amen. I know, uh, I, anyway, verse 8. I want, to, I want you to notice these two words, provideth and gathereth. What does that give? So first of all, we see her duty, but secondly, we see her diligence. Busy. And that's exactly how we ought to be. The Bible said, for any, if any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is likened to a man beholding his natural face in a glass. Look at James 1.25. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. I had a friend of mine. Now, remembering, remembering what you're told is one thing. But I had a friend of mine call me and he said, I'm having trouble with my boss. He said, she'll come and, and tell me one thing, and then I go do it. And then when, I come, when she comes back to inspect it, it's not right. I said, look, you, let me tell you how to transform what you're doing. If you will, when she gives you directives, if you will get your notepad out that the military gave you, 
And he was not in the military at the time, but get a notepad out just like your military, the military gave you. Get that notepad out and write down the instructions and verify the instructions with her. He said, well, we're at constant war. I said, just listen to what I'm trying to tell you. Write the instructions down so you don't forget them. He started doing that, and before she left, she'd say, he'd say, okay, you want me to do this, right? This, this, and this. And everything she said, yes. So when, when she came back to inspect, if she said, that's not how I wanted it, he'd get his pad out and say, but you said this right here. And he said, then what happened is that this woman would fight for him. There's a time to where there was going to be a government layoff from his job. They were going to lay some people off. She fought for him to be put in a different position. Why? Because he learned to be diligent in his duty with what he was told to do. The challenge to put the sluggard, uh, put to the sluggard, I should say. There's a challenge that is put to the sluggard. Look at me in verse 9. How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard? When wilt thou arise out of thy sleep? So the challenge is here. But in Proverbs chapter 10, verse 9, this is a very disgraceful thing. He that gathereth in summer is a wise son, but he that sleepeth in harvest is a son that causeth shame. Now we know the feast and we know the harvest and we know about barley and we know about the wheat in the Bible. But really, God tells us, Jesus Christ said, I will make you fishers of men. The Lord Jesus said, you need to pray for, uh, for laborers that the Lord would send forth labors into his harvest because the, the harvest, it, it's already white under harvest. In other words, it's so ready, it's almost fallen off and you need to get out there and get busy. You and I know full well that the Bible is talking about our service to God that we need not to be lazy. You see, in every area of our lives, in body, mind, and spirit, we need to resist laziness in all areas. I personally uh, have liked sleep in my life. It's something that I found that was very enjoyable. But then as I get older and I realize I'm running out of time, I don't even have to, I get enough sleep, but I get up very, very early in the morning. Sometime I get up early because I, I, I just, it just happens, and I don't want to. But the times when I set a clock, I get up, I get busy, and I'm immediately busy. And you know, I, very rarely do I go through a day and look back at the day and say, I didn't get anything accomplished. I've told you this before as an encouragement. Get up ahead of your day. Because if you do not get up ahead of your day, you cannot prepare for the day when you wake up and you're already in your day. You're already behind. See, if we don't live by structure, then we're prone to sloth, which leads to procrastination. See that? No structure leads to sloth, which leads to procrastination. Live life on purpose. Live life with purpose, LWP. Live life with purpose and do it all on purpose. I get up on purpose. I go to bed on purpose. When I get up on purpose, I don't always want to get out of the bed, right? But I, if I have to, I'll set two alarms because I'm going to get up ahead of my day so that I'm already getting things accomplished uh, uh, way ahead of time, I saw a farmer one time in Pennsylvania. He, he had a shirt on, had a guy carrying a bucket. He said, I get more done by 8 o'clock than you do by 5 o'clock. Right. And that's what happens when you get up. Some people say, well, I, I would like to read more. Get up. Get out of the bed. Go to bed early. Uh, I would, I, you know, my suggestion would be turn the TV off. But how about take that thing and call the cable company and say, turn it off. Right. Save you a lot of money, by the way. See, we all have faults and failures in our life, but if I allow each day to drift by, laziness becomes fatal to many areas of my life. And the love, the, you, let me share this. The love of the sluggard is lethargy. Look with me in verse 10. The love of the sluggard is lethargy. Verse 10. Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, 
a little folding of the hands to sleep. When I was in high school, uh, during, during the off season of the football, I had to drive 48 miles to go to, to school. I lived in a, a little town in Louisiana, in LaSalle Parish, and then I commuted every day to West Monroe, Louisiana. And no, I don't know the guys from Duck Dynasty. <laughs> but I went to West Monroe, uh, Louisiana every day. But I remember my dad would have to wake me up like at uh, 4.45 or 5 o'clock in the morning because I had to drive, but I had to eat. And you know what I would tell my dad? Dad, can you just give me five more minutes? Just five more minutes. I don't know what it was in my mind that if I could just get five more minutes of sleep, it's going to redeem my whole, my whole sleep for me. But man, that five minutes felt good. You know I'm telling you the truth. You're smiling at me, right? But lethargy, the desire to say, no, I'm just going to go ahead. No, brother, when, you're, when you wake up, get up. Just go ahead and get up. One person told me one time, well, I, I get up at so-and-so, and... -so and uh, is that early? <laughs> no, no. Ahead of your day allows you to be able to walk with God, to fellowship with the Lord, have your day started right. Now, I've said many times before, if you, if you finish, if you start wrong, finish strong. If you start wrong, finish your day strong. Have you ever given in to laziness? Have you? As you reflect upon giving in to laziness, can you see how sloth changes your attitude about responsibility? So when I, am, when I give over to laziness, it facilitates sloth, which changes my attitude about my responsibility. Laziness just isn't contained in one's love of sleep. It infects your whole life. It, it isn't, well, I love sleep. Well, there's a lot of problems with getting too much sleep. One is inactivity. Because many people, and you can sleep as long as you want to. I'm, t I'm telling you, you need to do what God wants you to do. But you need not to waste your whole life. You, you know, if you're not careful, you, you don't. Hey, forgive me for short talking. Don't you wish, honestly, don't you wish that with the wisdom that you have, that you could go back to be able to redo your education when you were 19 and 20 years old? Yeah. I mean, I remember the days to where my, my English teachers were trying to help me and instruct me, and they were uh, really, really diligently helping me. And I, just, I had uh, other things on my mind. But you see the loss of the slugger? Notice what it says in verse 11. So shall the poverty come as one that traveleth, and the want as an armed man. It doesn't take long to find out that when you travel, you lose a lot of money. It takes a lot of money. You have to eat, eat out different things when you're traveling from, you know, we go from here to Mississippi to Louisiana to Texas. It costs a lot of money. But I will tell you this, what we've learned is I'm going to fast. I'm going to eat breakfast right before I leave, and I'm not eating until... It's time when I get, get, get down there or at, at nighttime, a couple of meals ain't going to hurt missing it, right? Now, the problem with sleep is this. We sleep, and then we're inactive at work, and then we wonder why we have health problems. Yeah. So one of the things that I, I've learned to do, and this is to try to help you, is that I, I, have, I have learned that when I do get up, I use technology so that I can listen to information and I, like yesterday, I woke up at 4.11 in the morning. So I woke up at 4.11 just on my own, just woke up. I'd had a full night's sleep. And what I do, I, I went and got a glass of water and I took a, a vitamin, a vitamin supplement. And uh, then, then I, I put my headphones on and I, I just started walking. And I... But during that time, as I'm, I'm listening to things that are beneficial, you have an opportunity to be able to listen to the Bible. I have a preacher friend of mine. He said, I spend my whole walking time praying and asking God to intervene. I have a study time of my day, but I'm so far ahead of my day that my study time could actually start at 6 o'clock in the morning, but yet I've already, I already have an hour and a half 
taken care of on my personal education, edification, and walking with God already established. You see that? And then that way you don't get in the backside of your day being so busy that you say, hey, I, I didn't get anything accomplished with the Lord. Benjamin Franklin certainly is not the godliest uh, individual we would want to ever quote, but he, he had a lot of practical wisdom. And he said, he who wakes up late trots all day long. Have you noticed that? That when you wake up late, your day's already going, everybody's already awake, and you're trotting all day long. I got, I got this and got that and got... You know, busyness is according to what's in your mind, right? But if you're ahead of the day, busyness is something that you can, you can compartmentalize and you may be busy in this and things, but things have a, a less of a habit of taking you off course. Now, I'm going to share this with you and then we'll finish. The loss of the sluggard. Have you ever noticed by observing ants that they don't just kind of lounge around? I mean, they are busy, aren't they? And you know what? It's back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. They're just busy. But the loss of the sluggard, Proverbs chapter 10, verse 4, he that becometh poor, he becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand, laziness. But the hand of the diligent maketh what? Anyone can come in this country and work hard and be very, very prosperous and wealthy. Any, anyone. It, it's about your work ethic, pal. Right. So the Bible said in Proverbs 13, 4, The soul of the sluggard desireth and hath nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. Proverbs 19, 15, Slothfulness casteth into a deep sleep, and an idle soul shall suffer hunger. Proverbs 20 and verse 4, The sluggard will not plow by reason of the cold. Therefore shall he beg and harvest and have nothing. In Proverbs 21, 25, the Bible said, The desire of the slothful killeth him, for his hands refuse to labor. You know what the number one complaint of all business owners that I talk to with, with the exception of just a handful, can't get people to work. Do you know, do you know if you start a business and, and people find out that you work, they'll, keep, they'll recommend you to other people. Why? Because you have enough character to get up and get busy and work hard. Every hand bowed, every eye closed.